What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this video, we're going to go over the steps necessary to decommission a domain controller in your environment. So to get started, we're going to open up PowerShell and run the command netdom query FISMO. Um, FISMO stands for Flexible Single Master Operations. And what they do is run the master operation roles for your domain slash forest. There are five roles in total, and they are the PDC emulator, the RID master, the infrastructure master, the schema master, and the domain naming master. Uh, the details of what they do are uh, not really in the scope of this video, but I should point out that they are critical to running a healthy domain. And since, uh, domain, this, since this domain controller is going to be decommissioned, we want to make sure that we transfer those roles prior to demoting the DC. All right, so if we run that command, we can see that the schema master and the domain naming master are on DC02. And it just so happens that this machine is the machine that we're trying to decommission. So we'll have to transfer those roles uh, to DC01 since that domain controller is going to remain online. And I have a notepad open with the command that's used to transfer the roles from one DC to another. So I'm going to copy and paste that into our PowerShell window. But basically the command is move AD directory server operations master role. And we're going to specify the DC of DC01. So with that now ran, um, if I go ahead and run that net DOM query command again, we can see that all FISMO roles are now pointing to DC01, which in this case is what we want because that's going to be the only domain controller that is going to remain online for the time being. All right, so now let's go into server manager and run the uh, remove role wizard. So we click next here, next again. I'm sure we've done this uh, plenty of times. Uh, we're going to specify the Active Directory Domain Services role. But before I do that, I noticed that there are other roles installed, such as the DHCP server. So I'm just going to check to see if that is still active. Um, I know for a fact that it's not. But it's always a good idea to verify uh, just to make sure that you're not removing something that's going to potentially impact production. So uh, like I said, this is not running at the moment, so we'll go ahead and close that. But it's always a good idea to check. So from there, we'll go ahead and uncheck the Active Directory Domain Services. And if you want to remove the management tools, go ahead and leave that checked. Uh, in my case, I'm going to leave those features enabled until I'm ready to fully delete the machine. All right, so now we're prompted with an error that's letting us know that we cannot move forward unless we demote this domain controller to a member server. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now we're given the option to do a forest removal of this domain controller. Uh, I have to say that this is a very bad idea and should not be used. Uh, you typically want to do a forest removal if it's the last DC in the domain. And since this is not the case, we can remove it gracefully. Also, since my user account has the permissions to demote this DC, I can move forward by clicking on the next button. Otherwise, you need to enter in your credentials. All right, next up, the wizard is letting us know that the current DC is a DNS server and a global catalog server. Uh, so we'll need to click on the checkbox to proceed with re removal. So we'll go ahead and do that and then click on next. And I'll go ahead and leave the default here to remove DNS delegation because it's going to help us out during the post uh, decom cleaning. However, I will need to enter in my credentials. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that now. So once that is done, we'll go ahead and click on next. And um, here is going to be the new administrator password. Um, since this is now going to be a member server, we have the ability to log on locally. So I'll go ahead and enter in that. Uh, once that is ready, we'll go ahead and click next. And um, Finally, if we wanted to script this out, we can uh, go ahead and copy that into a PS1 file. But in our case, since we're only doing one, I'll just go ahead and click on the demote and uh, that should do it for us. So this process usually takes a couple of minutes, so I'm going to speed it up. Uh, but once it's been completed, you should see a prompt that you are about to be signed out. Uh, we can also verify by the green little checkbox here that the domain controller has been successfully demoted. All right, so once we click close, we should be restarting. So next up, we're going to go through the cleanup phase of demoting a domain controller. Uh, we can start off by opening up Active Directory users and computers. And if we click on the domain controllers OU, we can see that DC02 is no longer in that OU. 
um, if we go to computers OU, we can see that it's there. So it's basically essentially removed itself as a domain controller and it's done some of the cleanup, but there are still some tasks that we need to do by hand, uh, which actually leads us to our next step, which is going into sites and services and removing any null connections that are in there. Uh, this is essential for keeping a healthy replication flow and we want to remove any instance of that DC in there. So if we go ahead and expand servers here and go into the NTDS settings, we can see that DC01 is replicating from DC02. Uh, you guys see a problem here? So to fix that, we'll need to delete DC02 from the list of servers. And once that is done, we should no longer see a connection on DC01. So let's go back into DC01 now. I'll go ahead and refresh that page and we should see that the connection is now gone. All right, so that is working as expected. Um, next up, we'll need to go into DNS and make sure that any, uh, any connections in there or any pointers in there are removed. So with DNS now open, we basically want to look through every folder and remove every instance of the DC that we're removing. Uh, this can obviously take a bit of time depending on the size and complexity of your environment, but it needs to be done. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to fast forward through that part. Um, so we can just move on ahead. All right, last but certainly not least, we need to make sure that any servers with static IPs have their DNS records updated if they were pointing to the decommissioned DC. Uh, in my lab, I happen to have two domain controllers and each server was pointing to each domain controller respectively. And I'm gonna wanna update them to point to the new DC that I'm gonna be bringing up uh, relatively soon. However, if you had another domain controller available right now that you wanted to use, uh, you can go ahead and simply use that IP address. And to do that, we're going to open up PowerShell and invoke the command on the set of computers that you want to update. So we'll run invoke command, specify the computer name, and we'll start off by running the get DNS client server address commandlet to see what our current DNS servers are at the moment. Uh, if you look under the server addresses property, we can see that I have my DNS servers set to uh, 172.16.10.100 and .101. So to change that, we'll go ahead and up arrow and pipe the original command to set DNS client server address. And I happen to know that my next DC is going to be 172.16.10.102. So I'm gonna set that in now, that way it can be ready immediately upon the promotion of that DC that we're gonna create later. So with that now set, let's go back into our ethernet settings and just confirm that the settings have been updated in the GUI. So if I click on uh, IPv4 here, uh, we can see that the settings now 172.16.10.100 and 102. I also wanted to mention that this method here is very scriptable. So if we wanted to go back into PowerShell, we can easily enter individual servers by doing, um, doing it as a one by one basis, or we can iterate through an array of servers and running it through a for each loop. All right, folks, that about wraps it up for this video. This is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.